Well, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. I'm just taking a little hike here and I thought, uh, I thought I'd make this video for you about a very exciting development in the area of Cold Fusion Leonard. Now, as you know, I've been interested in this subject uh, for about, uh, it's been a number of years ever since I got involved with remote viewing and I saw that there were a bunch of scientific topics that hadn't received fair treatment by mainstream science and uh, obviously Fleischmann and Pond's cold fusion uh, was definitely one of those topics and I've made a few videos uh, about it in the past which I'll uh, I'll uh, put right up here. Um, so what's happened recently is there's been a device called a thunderstorm generator which uh, claims to use uh, low energy nuclear reaction type plasma processes uh, in combination with a combustion engine. It's kind of like a hybrid device that takes the exhaust of ordinary carbon combustion engines, carbon fuel combustion engines, and does a Lenner process with the gases to transmute them uh, into gases that don't contribute any carbon to the atmosphere. And there are only climate friendly uh, exhausts coming out of the engine. And uh, this is a very interesting development because, uh, you know, for a couple of years now, I've been following Bob Greenier on the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Uh, I started following Bob because I was looking for uh, answers to questions about crop circles. I mean, the strange effects that we saw around crop circles and how would the shapes, the spiral vortex type shapes contribute to battery and camera failure. I mean, it was thinking about this for decades. And when I came across the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project channel on YouTube, it answered a lot of those questions because uh, there's just embedded in Cold Fusion Leonard a lot of uh, uh, ideas and research and theory into the idea of vortices and plasmas and spiral type shapes and uh, fractal toroidal uh, electromagnetic moments. Um, and so these sorts of structures and processes have non-ordinary electromagnetic effects. And that's sort of what I was looking to discover. And uh, Bob and the MFMP team really helped me to put that together. And so recently, uh, they've been looking into this thunderstorm generator invented by Malcolm uh, Bendel. And this is a very interesting backstory. I'll post the video here where Malcolm is talking about how he got involved with this. Uh, it's very actually, it's an interesting story. He says that he was asked to contact Martin Fleischmann by someone from the U.S. Navy. Uh, I'm assuming this would be in the 90s. And after Fleischmann and Pons had revealed their experiment in 1989, for which they were completely ostracized and pilloried and uh, uh, completely uh, thrown out of the scientific condensed matter community and actually left the country, there was such a backlash. Uh, maybe what they were doing isn't literally cold fusion of neutrons, but there was something going on there because other people had reproduced the same effects that they did. Uh, namely, John Omira Bakris, uh, who wrote that uh, really well put together book, The New Paradigm, where he mentions many topics in science that remain unexplained, cold fusion just being one of them. Uh, Mar uh, Omira Bakris was one of Fleischmann's uh, students, I believe. And uh, he, in The New Paradigm, he talks about all the, the shortcomings of mainstream science and how it can't explain uh, a lot of things, not just cold fusion. He even actually mentioned my book, uh, Opening Minds, in his chapter about crop circles, for which I was really surprised. I'm reading along there and there. He's mentioning my book. His book came out, I think, around 2008, 2009. So I've been following this topic for a while, and... Bendel was asked by the U.S. Navy to go spend a week with Martin Fleischmann, not just a cup of, have a, a, an afternoon cup of coffee or something at the local coffee shop. He spent a week with Martin Fleischmann. And Bendel is one of the, from what I understand, one of the top petroleum 
uh, experts on the planet, petroleum engineers. So he knows a lot about carbon fuels and he learned a lot about cold fusion. And so for decades, he's been working on this uh, plasma, plasmoid thunderstorm generator that works in conjunction with uh, combustion engines. And uh, so this is a very interesting uh, sort of backstory to the whole project. This isn't someone that just popped out of nowhere. This is someone that was asked by the U.S. military to find out more about cold fusion Leonard. And so here we are years later. They just recently had a press conference held in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. Well, kind of like a, it was a demonstration. And Bob Greener was there. Uh, I'll link that video too where Bob really explains uh, how it works. You know, it, it, you take the exhaust from the combustion engine, you put it through what Malcolm calls the bubbler, uh, which has an ultraviolet lamp, which uh, ionizes the water and the gases going through it and creates that same sort of separation that leads to oxyhydrogen gas, the Omaza gas, which is basically what Bob Greener has called Leonard in a can. Uh, it's a way to produce this sort of Leonard reaction, which we know from the work of Takayaki Matsumoto, which we've talked about here, and uh, Bob uh, translated uh, Matsumoto's works into a fantastic book that where you can read what Matsumoto says about this. Basically, he showed us that cold fusion Leonard is a type of micro ball lightning, coherent matter, that it's really all the same sort of process. There's different ways to create micro ball lightning and the Omaza oxyhydrogen gas is um, uh, one way to create this uh, uh, micro ball lightning process. So we're talking one step past plasmas or pl plasmoids. We're talking uh, coherent matter. And so this thunderstorm generator apparently uses this process to ionize the gases in the water to create a Lenner process. It uses a special type of uh, uh, pl uh, plasma vortex um, tube and container called a Hill, Rank Hill vortex tube, uh, which uh, does something to this HHO gas to facilitate the Lenner process, something about the vortex shape of it. In any case, it's a very interesting set of developments that what we could have on our hands here is a type of hybrid device. And if it really does create Leonard, and I'm not enough of an expert to certify this device, but it seems to have a lot of people interested in it. And it's obviously Bendel and his group have been working on this for decades. And if you go to their website, uh, which is very interesting, also somewhat complex, has a lot of math and a lot of numbers on it, um, it's pretty clear they've been studying this sort of in the background for decades. So I just want you to consider the possibility that despite what we see around us on the news, even on the internet, even on our favorite pages, there could be other people working on new technologies, new devices, uh, sort of in secret that are waiting till it really works to bring it forward. And this could be one of those uh, devices. So if it really does work with Leonard, we would expect to see the same sort of nuclear transmuted elements, nuclear synthesis, electronuclear collapse, as Takemaki, uh, Takeaki Matsumoto uh, called it. And uh, the kind of alchemical transformation of carbon, in this case, into other types of gases and, and elements that do not contribute to greenhouse gases. This uh, arrangement of this uh, plasma diffuser with a combustion engine also seems to increase its efficiency too. So this could be a very exciting development. It seems to have attracted a lot of interest over in Europe. I haven't heard so much about it here in the US, but I think if you look at the history of technology and science, you do have breakthrough uh, technologies come forward every once in a while. You and I may have seen a lot of devices in the past that we thought were going to be like the jump to zero point energy, purely quantum driven 
engines with no exhaust products that had unlimited energy. And those, to my knowledge, haven't panned out. But this is a kind of interesting step in the right direction. We know the Leonard process is real. Believe me, after a couple of years of watching and interacting with Bob, I've learned a lot about Leonard. And there's a zero doubt in my mind at this point that many inventors from Matsumoto to Alexander Parkhamov, a former Soviet Union, Russia, and other experimenters, John O'Meara Bakris, uh, Ken Shoulders over at SRI, one of Hal Putoff's colleagues, uh, definitely invented this process. And there's not a lot of disagreement between them about what makes it work. There are different names for these uh, self-contained plasmoids. I mean, Shoulders called them Evos and Matsumoto called them Itonic Clusters. And uh, Shek Paranov, uh, a fantastic Russian researcher uh, that showed us why these objects are inherently blurry. Hello. Because they, uh, the, the, the ball lightning changes the permittivity of space and changes the speed of light and creates these sort of double images. Very interesting stuff. He calls them Kozirev Dirac uh, uh, monopoles. And there's plenty other of names for these ectons um, and shoulders originally called them strong electrons. In any case, whatever you want to call them, it all seems to be the same process. Um, you might know it as static electricity. Uh, th this is sort of a self-contained coherent type of matter that visually you could relate to ball lightning and micro ball lightning. And that seems to be what we're dealing with here. So, if we finally have a sustained process that we can combine this with our existing technology in a gradual evolution towards more advanced energy technology, it'd be very exciting, I think, agree. So anyway, watch this space. Uh, check out the MFMP uh, YouTube channel. I'll put a link below. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care for now, and bye.